Okay, guys, this is insane. Okay, we're moving into the Steam Crowder story. Okay, and I'm gonna take my jumper off for this because this is this is absolute insanity. So there was drama around Steam Crowder. I'm gonna give like a really, really quick rundown of what actually happened. Okay, so apparently Steven Crowder recorded this guy from the Daily Wire, I think, I believe, because they offered him like a contract and they had like some things in the contract. It was like a $50 million contract. And Steven Crowder was like, no, that's not enough. We can't do that. I mean, that's not the official story. Obviously, he says, well, there were some, you know, some parts of the contract that I didn't like. And if I get demonetized, then they have to pay me less. And he's turning it around. But basically it was that he didn't, he wasn't happy with the contract saying, you know, they're not paying me enough. I would only make like 8 million or 15 million a year after this contract, you know, after all my expenses. So that's not good enough. 50 million a year is, is not acceptable. Okay, I'm Steven Crowder. Hell yeah. Then he got into this fight with Candace Owens. Okay, and it got like into a little bit of a back and forth about this. Shit. And what basically happened was that Candace Owens questioned his credibility. But then there was this one video where she basically was like, right, guys, I have got some information about Crowder. And let's be honest, man, we should all just pray for him, okay? At this point, what Steven Crowder needs is just prayer from everyone, and we need to support him. He's going through a very difficult time right now. It's very challenging for him. And also, part of that was like, she's like, I have information about Steven Crowder, but I don't feel it's like for me to come out with this information. Like, I shouldn't be the one breaking that information. I mean, I could, because I have that information, but... And everyone's like, hold on, what's she saying? Like, is she actually saying, like, Steven Crowder's gay? Because it sounded so much like Steven Crowder is, like, she's trying to expose him as a gay or a bi person. Which is fine, you know, I don't, I, like, I absolutely have nothing, no issue with gay people. But obviously, Steven Crowder is, like, has hardcore homophobic tendencies, right? He's, like, he's trying so hard to be manly with all his guns and his gun holsters that he wears 24 hours in his stupid show. But so I was like, okay, I can't be, right? Because you read the comments as well, and everyone's like, well, but Steven Crowder is married. He's married to like a white woman and he's got white children. Everything's very white. So he can't be gay, right? Because a, a man who's married... How could he possibly be gay? <laughs> it's like acting like it's not like a fairly common thing that like men in their 50s, 60s are like, yeah, well, to be honest with you, I always had a thing for men and I'm kind of coming out now and I'm actually getting a divorce, you know. That is a thing that happens, but not Steven Crowder. But then the next thing surfaced, okay, and that broke my brain because I was like, okay, sure, he, that sounded like Hannah's owner saying that he's gay, but can't be, he's married, it makes no freaking sense. And then this video surfaced, and I'm gonna share this with you guys, because this is absolute insanity, okay? Check this out. So here we have Steven Crowder. This is from the H3H3 subreddit. I'm gonna put the volume up for you guys. Listen what he has to say here. This is a five-year-old video, four or five-year-old video, obviously from Louder with Crowder from his show. He had the following to say. Sometimes you have to make hard decisions, and sometimes you think you have to make hard decisions, and it's just wrong. I'm afraid of that. Uh, I'm afraid of, I'm afraid, frankly, that he used to have a bad temper. I'm afraid of it coming back. I'm afraid of Mr. Hyde rearing his ugly bisexual head. That was a, sm that was a short phase. Um, no, I'm, I'm afraid. Afraid of, afraid of getting angry. What? 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 And when I saw this, I couldn't believe it. Okay. And it's like, why did we not... Why was this not everywhere since like five years this has been floating around? Why do I only see this now? I mean, maybe it's kind of surfaced again in this whole light of this Candace Owens having this sub subtone of him being gay. But he said... I'm afraid of Mr. Hyde rearing his ugly bisexual head. That was a, sm that was a short phase. Um, no. I'm afraid of Mr. Hyde wearing his ugly hat, his bisexual hat coming back. That was a short phase. It's like, okay, okay, dude. So you're saying you had a bisexual phase. What? Like, what the hell is going on, okay? Like, why is not everyone... Like, it's the biggest amount of hypocrisy you can imagine. And that's kind of what this whole segment is about, okay? It's not just about Steven Crowder. This is why I had to actually completely stop watching and stop playing around with it. Um, the point I was watching gradually as I watched over the years upon years, it just kind of got darker and darker into whack stuff I never thought I'd be watching. And I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there that are watching some porn that is, is something you never, ever thought you'd be watching. Sixth grade, um, the point 
I jumped into some weird categories, man. This is tough. <clears throat> Transgenders having sex with chicks. And why am I watching this stuff? Well, because I'm opening myself up to spirits and spirits. The more I watch the porn, I don't even realize it. You know, and as it gradually goes, it gets darker. And I was watching... Mm, transgenders having sex with like transgenders and then dudes and, and I'm like why am I watching this stuff eventually the point's not gonna be enough just like Ted Bundy eventually the point wasn't enough for Ted Bundy and eventually I will actually consider having a relationship with a transgender person eventually I will actually realize that I don't mind transgender people and that in fact I am quite attracted to them eventually the dark side will take over, right? That's basically what he's saying here. And it's the same thing with Crowder, right? You have all these hardcore conservatives who are like, yeah, dude, man, we got to stop gay people. We got to stop trans people. Like the biggest problem in the world is like trans people. Like we have no bigger issue. And then if trans people read stories to children, that's the worst. They're all groomers and like they're, they're feeding these horrible narratives. And then when you dig deeper, because often people like this, like this guy, or specifically Crowder, right, who's like prides himself being like this really manly dude with six guns in his holsters and constantly defining his manliness with how many guns he can carry. It's often, more often than not, it's these kind of guys who then, if you dig deeper, right, when you look deeper into it, you realize the whole thing is, is just a facade. They're just projecting. You know, I'm not saying Crowder is gay, but I'm saying, I mean, he said himself that there's like, there was like a gay phase in his life, a bisexual phase. And it's like, okay, why don't you just admit to it? Like, what's the big deal? If you are into that stuff themselves, it, the same with this other, what's the other guy? Oh, shit, now I forgot his name. It's Jesse Lee Peterson, okay? So you've, I'm sure you've all seen Jesse Lee Peterson, okay, who has this hardcore anti-gay agenda, right? And he, he builds like his whole format, his whole show, he builds around like hate against trans people, hate against uh, gay people and all that. And then it turns out people are coming out and they're like, yeah, well, I, you know, I'm a man and I had something with Jesse Lee Peterson. Let's read this really quick. Did LGBT minister Jesse Lee Peterson have a silly songs? Several men have come forward to say they had uh, relationships or were propositioned by anti-LGBTQ minister Jesse Lee Peterson. The allegations have emerged to a, a church of militant far-right Catholic group website and subsequent investigation by the Daily Beast. Two of Peterson's former male associates came out in June with on-the-road interviews saying they engaged in <laughs> activities with him, while other men said he propositioned to, it, to them. So th this is cool, man. I'm not saying don't have a, a contact with like males, you know, don't be gay. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like, just admit to it. Just be gay. If you want to be gay, be freaking gay. And how, how broken does your head have to be in order to not only pretend to not be gay and be gay around the back secretly, but also hate against gay people. Have a whole format on YouTube or wherever his show is hosted where all you do is hate against gay people. It's like, bro, like how broken can your head be, honestly? Like it's absolutely unbelievable. The amount of projecting, you know, the amount of insecurity. They just can't accept themselves. They are so attached to their little book of holiness, right? They are so attached to the Bible, which again, I'm not saying like, you know, don't be attached to the Bible. It's fine if you believe in Christianity and that's your thing, that's cool. But they are so like, but the Bible says you can't be gay. But I love cock so much, man. I just love cock so much. So up to the front, I'm gonna pretend that everything is cool and you know, you should not be gay and this is awful. But round the back, I'm, I'm having like intercourse with freaking gay prostitutes. He's the next Dave Rubin, basically, right? Crowder with this shit now coming out where he's like, oh, you know, I had this bi phase and um, <clears throat> you know, I don't wanna talk about it. Also note that Crowder, since this happened, since this went down, he hasn't sent any, like he hasn't been on social media. He had like one or two retweets that he did, but he's been way less active, way less active in producing content. Maybe, and this is obviously just, maybe he's just on fucking holiday. Okay, I don't know what, what the hell Steven Crowder's doing right now. I could imagine that he needs a holiday, but it's absolutely possible that right now, behind closed doors, he's kind of wrestling with himself, right? And he's like, okay, listen, like talking to himself. It's the, the cat is out of the back. I'm out of the closet, okay? Everyone knows this this clip that I showed you guys now is circulating everywhere. I'm gay. Everyone kind of oh not gay, maybe I'm bi, okay? Everyone knows that. Probably his wife also heard it and she's like, um, excuse me, Stephen, what do you mean with like the, the bi face you had? And they're like, uh oh. And he's in a bit of trouble at home. Who knows? Just speculating. But the thing is like, 
Even if you would say, okay, guys, I've been hiding long enough. I have to come out. I have to be open now and upfront and just accept myself for what I am. I am a bisexual man, okay? That's what it is. I love my wife, love my children, I love women, but I also love men. I'm into men, you know? I'm, I like both. I'm not objected to any of it. He can't f***ing do it because that's the big problem with all these people. Their audience is built around the bigotry. The, the audience they are, they are festering, that they are feeding with their nonsense, is built around the hate against gay people, the hate against trans people, the hate against differentness. So he can't even do it. Imagine that. Imagine you are bisexual and you yourself probably could come to terms with it. You're like, yeah, this could be fine. You know, no big deal. You know, I'm married to a woman. I mean, all these things. But I'm also bi. I'm happy to come out with this kind of stuff. But you can't because you know your income and your fans are basically cut in half. The second you do it, <laughs> like you have to move over to the other side. You almost have to move to the left, right? If, you, if, if Steven Crowder would come out and say, yes, I'm gay, like, people would be super, super upset, you know, or bi or whatever. I keep saying gay, you know, he might as well be bi. And that's the same. That's kind of the link to Dave Rubin, right? I don't know. You guys know Dave Rubin, right? You know who that is. So this is Jave Dave Rubin. He is the host of uh, whatever it is, some right-wing show. And he's big homie with Candace Owens and the whole right-wing circle. And it's the same thing. He He's basically a guy who feeds, like, lies and nonsense to right-wing people. He's a right-wing agitator. That's basically what he is. But... Also, he's gay and he's openly gay. Not only is he gay, he lives with a man. And I believe they already have two surrogate children, right? Like children that are from them, but born obviously from a mother that they rented more or less. So now Dave Rubin is in the same situation. You know, he has to kind of bridge this gap between his audience being extremely anti-gay and anti-LGBTQ and anti-trans and all this. So he comes out and he's like, yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> um, uh, I mean, I definitely am against these groomers. Uh, very important that <clears throat> these people, uh, you know, can't talk to children and all that. But you're gay. Yeah, that's different. So, I mean, I'm still hardcore against gays. And it's so pathetic how these people try to bridge this gap between, like, the expectation that their audience has to them. Because those are the people who pay their bills and th themselves, like their own persona. It is just such a revealing aspect of the whole right-wing sphere, where you see all these people pr pretending to be one thing, catering to this audience because they get money from it, while at the same time, they are something else. They don't, they lie. They lie to themselves, to their audience, to everyone, but everyone kind of accepts the lie, right? Here, here is, by the way, a picture uh, with him and his um, husband, I believe, I believe. I think they're married, right? Um, and they're, they're coming soon, baby one and baby two, okay? It's coming soon. So he's kind of upfront about it, but when you see him talking about it, he's kind of always rowing back a bit, and he's like, yeah, no, I mean, Gotta stop the groomers, okay? These groomers, very important, you know? And it's like, oh my God, it's so freaking cringe. It does something to your head, you know, if you're living in this world with this hypocrisy on your mind all the time, because Dave Rubin knows it, Steven Crowder knows it, Every, everyone knows it, you know? And there are more examples, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. These people, they all know this stuff, the hypocrisy that they're living in, but they can't come out because the audience, like I spoke about it before, so it's it's grinding on you. You know what I mean? It's slowly grinding you down on the inside. It's terrible. Nick Fuentes gives those vibes off too. Yeah, I mean, Nick Fuentes, he's like, he has admitted that he never had anything with like a woman, right? Like he never had a girlfriend, but he's talking like the most misogynistic, anti-feminist stuff that you can imagine. He has no idea what the f*** he's talking about. And we're going to talk about this in this live stream later on, okay? Because I found this amazing study that reveals why that is the case, okay? Why you have people like Nick Fuentes, who has no freaking clue, know nothing about women, having those extreme opinions on women. There's an ex extremely great study that breaks it down, like from a psychological point of view. But I don't want to mix this in right now because this is coming at a later point. A few other examples of this, probably is Ben Shapiro as well, right? Ben Shapiro, <laughs> there was this, this wonderful moment, like not long ago, where I think when Kanye came out and he said all this anti-Semitic stuff, right? And everyone was like, well, Kanye, hold on a second. You don't really like Hitler. And he's like, no, no, I love Hitler. Love him. Love everything he did. I'm a Nazi. I, I'm, you know, and this is the kind of stuff that he said. And then a lot of people from the Daily Wire were like, yeah, actually, <clears throat> actually, he's right. You know, um, I mean, uh, it's actually very important that we talk about the Jewish problem and all this kind of nonsense. So people came out supporting as subtle as you can be without saying it. So suddenly all these Daily Wire people sided 
with Kanye. And here you have like Ben Shapiro as kind of the face of the Daily Wire. And he's like, guys, wait a second. Why is suddenly everyone around me anti-Semitic? <laughs> And he's like the Pope of the Jews, I think, as he is titled every now and then. And he wakes up in this world that he's been in for years, where suddenly he realizes, hold on, everyone around me is anti-Semitic. The moment that we, we have camps where we bring Jewish people to, because they are so evil, they're going to pick me up. I'm going to be on their list. <laughs> you know, They're not going to hesitate one second. And it's just, it's so dumb. You know what I mean? Again, it's this hypocrisy. You see it everywhere in the right-wing sphere, you know, whether it's Dave Rubin or Crowder, all the other examples I spoke about, Jesse Lee Peterson. Constantly you have these stories coming out where they say one thing, but then they realize, hold on, like, that, that doesn't match. It is such a deranged world. And the main reason why that is the case, why it is built like this and it is so disastrous, is because it's all built around reactionarism or reactionaryism. They are all reactionaries. Okay, so that means they are not informed by facts or they're not informed by statistics or real scientific research or anything. They don't care about this kind of shit. That doesn't matter to them. What matters is that what they say gets clicks and with that revenue. That's all that matters, okay? So people are like, yeah, anti-Semitism, that shit sells. Clearly, you know, people are anti-Semitic deep in their heart, so let's cater to that. And they're like, oh, hold on a second. I'm Ben Shapiro, you can't do that. Or like, well, you know, bigotry towards trans people, towards gay people, you know, that, that's, that's, lots, so let's do that. Even I'm gay, even I had a, a bi face and I kind of enjoyed it at the time. Can't do that. We got to cater to that shit. So they're all not like basing it on actual real world facts and external factors that define certain things. They don't care about that. It's all pure reactionarism or reactionaryism. I don't know how to say it. You know what I mean. They're just reacting to, to bullshit. That's what they do because everyone is reacting with nonsense to other nonsense. You have like this really weird messed up world where everything is hypocri hypocritical. Everything is like contradicting each other. There is no red threat or actual opinions. You know, it's everyone is just saying whatever they think and whatever sells in that moment, catering to that audience, hoping to make a quick buck. And that's how you get people who are gay being bigots towards gay people, people who are Jewish feel suddenly realizing they're surrounded by anti-Semites. You know, it's it's insanity. The whole thing is absolute insanity. You know, it's a clown show. Nick Fuentes went on a date with an Aus Australian femboy. Yeah, exactly. You are right. Yeah, he's like, he went on a date with like this cat boy, right? Like a cat boy with cat ears. And it's all like, like an anime weird thing. And it's like, why do you hate against? Why can you not just say I'm a gay guy? Like he hates himself so much. He hates what he is, that he's just a guy who's into men. He hates it so much that he has to go all out and it's all about hate and the Nazis were right. And, you know, we should just destroy everyone who likes boys. And uh, I don't even know what to say about this shit anymore. Like, yeah, you're right. Nick Fuentes is such another great example. Uh, ZB says, do you think Steven puts dildos in his gun holsters at home? <laughs> He's sitting at home. Like, in front of the TV right now, he's really angry, you know, that everyone is, like, exposing him for what he is. And he's like, this sucks, man, with, like, two giant dildos in his holsters on each side. One pink one and one green one, neon green. He's like, this is so, I'm so angry about all this. Ugh. I'm sure Crowder has a testicle stress ball. <laughs> he's like, Argh. How hard can I squeeze the ball? <laughs> it's like hairy. It's got little hairs. I'm going to Google if that exists right now. Testicle stress ball. Oh, yes, there it is. A testicle stress ball. Stress tickles. Stress, te stress tickles. I'm sure he's got those, man. I mean, if he makes that many millions a year, he can definitely afford like a, a pair of stress, tic stress tickles, right? To squeeze them while he's pulling dildos into his holsters, sitting in front of the TV, watching gay porn. He can never be taken serious. Every single comment he gets from now on, like the Change Your Mind series, is gonna get shut down with haha gay. That's true, and I think that's why we hear nothing from Steven Crowder at the moment, because he's thinking about this shit, right? He's sitting at home, he's like, this is, this is set me up big time, man. This is gonna screw me over. A anything I do from now on, because my, my, brand is built on like you say my brand is built on this change my mind bullshit i can't do this anymore my brand in a way has been destroyed okay 
I need to come at it from a new angle. So I'm sure I, I can't wait to see where he's coming at it, man. ZB, he probably has customized tresticles. <laughs> yeah, true, man. They've got like a specific Crowder print on them. It says um, louder with Crowder on the testicle ball. But when you squeeze it, it pops out and it turns into Prouder with Crowder, right? See what I did there? Maybe he's gonna come out like storming forward and he's literally like, I am by. Yes, it's true. Uh, because, like, Candace Owens apparently has stuff on him. Okay, so if he doesn't do it, maybe he's worried she's gonna do it. And that might ruin his career if he keeps playing the hypocrisy card. So maybe that's gonna be his strategy. To come forward and say, bro, I'm gay. Or I'm bi. That's what it is. Live with it. You know, and I don't know where he's gonna go from there. It, it's gonna be cringe in any case. Uh, and yeah, Matt Walsh, you know, Matt Walsh is another example uh, in that regard. I don't know if you guys saw this, but when he was at Joe Rogan, the, uh, Joe Rogan asked him and he's like, so wh how many how many teens do you think right now are on hormone therapy and considering like to change their gender? And he was like, well, in the, in the United States, it, it's, it's gotta be um, in the millions. It's gotta be in the millions, right? And keep in mind, like Matt Walsh is the kind of guy who is supposedly the expert on that right? He's the expert when it comes to uh, LGBTQ and, and trans culture and like how bad that is and how ev all the people who are LGBTQ are groomers and all this stuff. He is the expert, right? He made the whole What is a Woman documentary. And he's like, yeah, it must be a million now. And then I think they looked it up. Like Joe Rogan's homie, who, what, Jamie or whatever his name is, he looked it up. And he was like, yeah, I think it's, it's like... 8,000 around the whole US. So, or even less, 5,000 or something like that. And it's like, oh, okay. And it was like this slight moment of awkward cringe. And then like a month later, Matt Walsh is back on it, you know, and he's back on lying again. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, this is all awful and it, it must be millions by now. These people don't care about the truth. They don't care about facts because what is a woman and trans hate is what sells his channel. So we keep hating on trans. You know, again, it, it's complete hypocrisy. I also saw this thing which made me laugh. Right-wing anti-vax doctor's account, uh, which is this guy up here, uh, oh, this woman, is now posting Photoshop pride photos to get, ga get gay people genocide, okay? So this woman posted this picture saying, it's not about human rights. Okay, we're not about human rights anymore uh, with this LGBTQ craziness and this grooming. At this point, it's about saying no to freaks, perverts, narcissists, and P word. It's out of control. Well, it turns out the picture is this is the picture. You know, there's, there are no children. And look how they like shopped a child in here and shopped another child on the shoulders. These people want these narratives to be true so much. They want so much that all these. LGBTQ and trans people are groomers, you know, they, they, they are so desperate to make this a reality, even it's not, it's clearly not, that they are willing to, to lie all the way to the bank. You know, they're like, yeah, no, it's, look at this picture. I bet she knew that it was photoshopped. I mean, look, you can think about what you want, whether it's, it's, it's a good or a bad thing that two people dressed like this with a pride flag walking down the street, but ultimately it is about human rights. It is about human rights. They're not hurting anyone, okay? It's not that anyone, and trust me, these, a lot of people would make the argument and say, well, what, what if children see this? There might be children on the side of the street, and the, if they see a man dressed like this, like, try it out. Let the child see it. Child is going to be like, mom, why is he dressed like that? And then you say, well, because he likes it. He enjoys wearing it like this. Children don't have this negative perception of nudity or wearing like leather belts and stuff. That doesn't exist in their world. They are children. They don't know. So if you say, well, some people, they like that normal days, they are dressed normally. But on a day like today, it's Pride Day or whatever. It's a Pride Parade. They like, they enjoy dressing up like this and walking down the street like that. Why not? And maybe the kid giggles. It's like, yeah, it's funny, you know. Yeah, it is a bit funny. Sure, I agree. Why not? It's a bit funny. But like, these were not all freaking groomers, you know. And then they, like, like Matt Walsh lying about it at Joe Rogan. I mean, oh my God. They're just making up a reality. They're making up a fake reality in their head to cater to their narratives. To make their narratives a reality. And now they're paying the price for it, right? Everyone is paying the price now. And hopefully... I don't know where Crowder can go from here, man, but it's gonna backfire pretty hard. I, I saw this thing the other day, like, let me see if I can find it, actually, because that is also absolute insanity. Elon was tweeting this shit. So here was the video, I don't know if you guys saw this, okay, 
of um, of uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. I want to get the name right. But she had the following to say. I'm just gonna play this for you guys in case you haven't seen it. It was it was floating around uh, the last few days, so I'm sure you've you've seen it by now. But let's listen to it again. Don't tell me that this is about an abdi a, a condemnation of anti-Semitic remarks when you have a member of the Republican caucus who, have, who has talked about Jewish space lasers and an, an entire amount of tropes and also elevated her to some of the highest committee assignments in this body. This is about targeting women of color in the, in the United States of America. Don't tell me because I didn't get a single Time apology when my life was threatened. Thank you. Don't so she is saying 100% the truth and now check the tweet that we get here omg clowner emoji aoc just threw a tent temper tantrum on the house floor slamming her notebook on the podium as she finished speaking this is about targeting women of color united states of america which is 100% correct this is exactly as ilhan omar so she was extracted from the house right from her role there uh, from from some committee or whatever and this was AOC's comment and she's 100% correct she's exactly saying how it is okay this is about targeting women of color this is about targeting Muslims and in, in fact there's another part of this segment where she actually says this is a legacy piece of the 9-11 bullshit right because 9-11 was really the moment that sparked and normalized the hate against Muslims in the United States okay and this is still a legacy piece of they can't have someone who is a Muslim sitting in such a, a position of power, right? But at the same time, you have Marjorie Taylor Greene in extremely powerful positions, and she's like talking <laughs> shit about conspiracy theories, anti-Semitic bullshit, while they try to project all that shit on Ilan Omar. It's insanity. It's absolute insanity. So this guy is like, haha, clown show. Look, she's throwing a temper tantrum. And then this guy quote tweets this and says, this is what I mean when I say it's the theater kids all the way down. The theater kids. Right? Remember what we just spoke about. Remember all the hypocrisy that goes through so many layers of, of literal people clowning. Like people pretending one thing, being another thing, then having to find out how they can balance both without offending their little bigoted viewers. That is a f***ing clown show. Right? It's a literal clown show. She is making a very important point and here is freaking Elon Musk replying with a laughing emoji. He's like, ha ha ha. I mean, I get it. Elon Musk had a little bit of a thing going on with like they were bashing each other on Twitter, AOC and Elon Musk, right? So there's a bit of history there. But like, bro, bro, how f***ing far Elon Musk is gone. Like that just shows it. Like, holy sh**. Like it is unreal how far this, this guy is gone. Like his Twitter timeline is a cesspool of bullshit from top to bottom. Ah... <sighs>